Error. Unable to load image. She has a neck slash that gives the impression that half of her head is coming off. Kirby can move in really amazing ways, and the way she kind of cocked her head, it almost looks like her head is falling off just in the movement that she can achieve. So I started exploring on her life cast with clay to give like a two or three inches prosthetic and kind of give the impression that the, the, the head is sort of severed like this. When we tried it on her for the makeup test, it really looks like her head is about to fall off. Our first scene we shot in an elevator together and I was very creeped out. Like I was uncomfortable to be in the elevator with her. So that's how good she looked in real life. <laughs> Jay Mitchell is unbelievable. She's really thrown herself into the part. She did a ride along with local police officers in Boston. She studied what it's like to work in a morgue. I liked the role because I thought that Megan was a very complex character. It seemed like a great place to take a character out of her comfort zone. She's just a badass. She brings us real rawness. Shay's reactions to my body and the positions, it's phenomenal. Her playing around with the rubber band ball sort of kept her mind off things, or at least she thought it would try and help. When we start talking about our cadaver and how to cast her, you're looking for someone who understands movement. You're looking for someone who can manipulate her own body. When I first read the breakdown, I was like, this role is made for me. Kirby is incredible. You've seen creepy characters in movies before, but the way that she moves her body, I didn't want to be in the elevator alone with her. <laughs> So it's acting, it's dancing, it's contortionism, and she's scary. There's no CGI that we're throwing at her. This is all her. This role definitely has some crazy things I've had to do. I have to pop my shoulders out of their sockets doing all sorts of creepy things. <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't know you'd be here. So this is the morgue. And this is where I spend majority of my time. No one seems to be home today. This is where Anna Gray is first brought in and they unzip her body bag and you see all the nastiness going on. It's crazy what they do to me. After I come out of hair and makeup, I do not even look like myself. It looks so realistic that I will walk by a bathroom and like the mirror and like, oh my goodness, that's me. I look. So terrifying. Everybody that I show the pictures to or that sees her on set are really amazed. I'm happy because she's super scary and I'm super thrilled about the way it's coming up. Adrian is incredible. Every single time she comes in, I'm never just used to it. His mind is just so creative. I mean, I could go on and on about Adrian and Ben. No, stop! No! No! So, that was my little tour of the morgue. Haha. -ha. Bye! The casting decisions on a movie like this, there are many things that come into play. It really starts off as a character piece about a woman who was a cop, who froze in the line of duty, wanted to be there for her partner, but obviously couldn't. He ended up passing away. When we cut to a year later, she's walking down the hall, and she's trying to get her life back together. And one of the ways she's going to do it is become the night to take person out of morgue. You're the new girl. Megan. I think that making it through these two nights at the morgue showed a lot. One of her biggest struggles was trying to prove it to herself that she could do this. I've always gravitated to horror movies that are more psychological in nature, where the protagonist is questioning their own sanity. The last thing you would ever believe is a cadaver has gotten up and started walking away. We wanted to make sure there were as many reasons for an audience to get why she doesn't just flee at the first sign of trouble. Throughout the movie, you don't know if it's just Megan going crazy because she is an addict and she's going through things and she's a little off, or if it's really happening. My name is Adrian Moreau and I do makeup effects on the movie.
The amount of makeup effects are very ambitious. So how can we do this? Because I love makeup effects and I want to give as much as we can. Adrian Moreau does my special effects and he is a mastermind when it comes to this. He maps out everything and it's so strategic and well-placed. This job is not for everyone. Because of the hours? Because the only co-workers are cadavers. I heard there were issues. Yes, there were issues. But I'm much better now. Welcome to the team. You're the new girl. Megan. Well, I got a weird one for you. Her name is Hannah Grace and her family was performing an exorcism or something on her. Dad? Something went wrong. And then she died in the middle of it. You know what they say. If an exorcism isn't completed, evil will find a new vessel. I believe when you die, you die. End of story. Then you're up for it? I can handle it. When you die, you die. When you die, you die. You've got to focus. Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. During the filming of The Exorcist, the world's most famous horror film, the director instructed the crew to casually fire shotgun blanks to get more authentic and credible reactions from the actors on set and capture the moment of sheer terror on their faces. Remember to click below to subscribe on the side for more great content.